Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Some people use cable for their internet connection, and some people use DSL for their internet connection. And up until recently, my parents still relied on dial-up. Oh, God. Perish the thought. I can't even remember the last time I was on dial-up. Yeah, that was, God, it's almost, uh, yeah, probably about two centuries ago. Huh. Well, everybody debates on whether cable's better than DSL or DSL's better than cable. And you know what? Uh, ultimately, it, it kind of depends on where you live, and specifically with DSL, how close you are to the central office. Uh, now, I've only had DSL once, and that experience was mediocre. I felt, in, in, my, in my gut, I felt that that DSL connection wasn't as fast as it would have been had I had access to a cable connection from that particular place in San Francisco. Uh, I've had cable broadband for for a while now, and I'm relatively happy with it. Even though cable's biggest shortcoming is that you share that uh, leg of the network with your neighbors, uh, from well, specifically in a home environment. I think that's kind of what we're talking about here when we're talking about broadband. So at night, when uh, people come home from work or kids come home from school, sometimes the internet connection is slower because there are more people using the network. But you know, for the most part, uh, I feel like I'm I'm definitely getting my money's worth, and I would certainly pay pay twice as much to go twice as fast. But unfortunately, that option is not available where I live. Well, how do you know that you're getting? Uh, as much as you should be getting from your internet service provider, well, at least in terms of broadband, you might want to check your broadband connection now. If you haven't tried this before, there are plenty of places you can do this. Broadbandreports.com has got a handful of speed tests. Bandwithplace.com, I think a live guest has just recently mentioned. Oh, DSL reports, broadband reports, they're one and the same. Speedtest.net is a service that I've used in the past, and just pulling it up here, a couple of minutes ago, uh, they've changed their interface drastically, and for for a good reason. Now it is fully graphical. Uh, you can pick easily pick a server that's located real close to where you live. It'll detect and tell you what it thinks you should test against. Run the test, save tests, and then get averages of your average upload speed and average download speed. Because that's the thing with an internet connection, it's never going to be the same. It's going to fluctuate, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. And if you get a nice average, you know, as long as that is, well, either more than what you're paying for or right around what you're paying for, what your ISP claims to be giving you, then, you know, you're fine. Uh, it seems to me mine is 9793 down and 422 up. I think my upload speed for, for this particular network is either 512 or, uh, yeah, I think it's right around 512. But since I'm streaming live video, of course, that's taking away some of the bandwidth. So I'm probably going to run uh, the test, you know, throughout the day, uh, over a week, and get a good average. You know, again, that's you know not scientific, but it's as scientific as it comes. Specifically, when you're testing your broadband speeds, it's going to vary. It's going to fluctuate. I wish I could get FiOS here. Unfortunately, no, I, I don't live in that neighborhood, and uh, you know, Ponzi won't let us move just so we can get a faster internet connection. Perish the thought. I'd easily pay twice as much just to go just to go just a little faster. Ugh, it's just something about ugh, broadband, man. Ugh, it's a drug.